So for this theorem, we have two functions, f and g. So we have f, which has a domain of a, and a codomain of r, and g, which has a domain of b, and a codomain also of r. And we're going to take uh, f and put it inside g. So that means that the range of a, which is f of a, has to belong to the domain of b. It has to be a subset of b. So um, if we know that g is strictly increasing, if we have a point of maximum or maximizer for f, it's going to be the same maximizer for g of f. And same goes for uh, minimizers. So we can say that if we're trying to maximize f, that's equivalent to trying to maximize g of f meaning that we're going to get the same um, minimizer or maximizer in this case. And it also holds for um, minimizers. So in order to prove this, we're going to use the theorem on the order isomorphism for strictly increasing functions. Because remember how we said that um, g has to be strictly increasing. So that theorem um, said that if a function is strictly increasing for every x which is bigger or equal to y, f of x will be bigger or equal to f of y, and also other way around. So basically the order is preserved between the two, um, the two variables. So the only difference is that now instead of using x and y, we're going to be using here f of x and f of y. And here we're going to be using g of f of x and g of f of y. So that's the basic idea behind, um, behind the theorem. So all we're actually doing is just really using different notation. So here x goes into f, and here f of x goes into g. But it's a very similar concept. So for the proof, we start off stating the theorem on order isomorphism. which, as we just said, says that if the function is strictly increasing, since that's a hypothesis or a condition for the, uh, for the theorem, and sorry, not f is increasing, uh, g is increasing, so if g is increasing, we can say that for every x and y, such that x is bigger or equal to y, then f of x, or g of x in this case, will be bigger or equal to um, g of y. Now, if we assume that um, f of x has a maximizer or a minimizer, let's say a maximizer, we're going to call it x0. And if it's a maximizer, that means that the maximum, which should be f of x0, is going to be greater or equal to all the other f of x values. So here we're saying that f of x0, which is the maximum, so the y value at the maximizer, is greater or equal to f of x. Now, if we're putting this uh, function f into our function g, essentially this corresponds to x. And this corresponds to y. So if we just replace those in there, we're going to have that g of f of x0 
is going to be bigger or equal to g of f of x. And so if that's the case, then the point x0 that we plugged in for f and then uh, into g, then x0 is a minima or a maximizer also for the function g. So it's pretty straightforward. We just have to assume that um, uh, from the hypothesis that x0 is a maximizer, in which case this is uh, bigger or equal to. Or if it's a minimizer, that would work as well. Um, then this would be flipped around. So you'd have f of x um, bigger or equal to f of x0. But nothing would actually change because still you would find that you have the same um, situation for g of f. And also, just so you know, if they actually asked you this with a strictly decreasing um, function for g, so if the function on the outside of the composition is strictly decreasing, then if you have a maximum for f, it actually becomes a minimum for g of f. And if you have a minimum, then it becomes a maximum. So it's strictly decreasing, it would flip around.